our past couple of days have been crazy. I don't even know where to start. I came here from the airport, jumped straight into the 25k, busted that, was a bad start. The next day was already five diamond main event and uh, I had a big piece of a really deep run into the tournament. There was a 5k side event where I had a big piece of the winner of that one as well. Then it was the 100k and I made fourth place myself. And after I busted, I actually went straight over to Aria, played a 10k, won that one. So I'm kind of on a really good run. Uh, right now we're at the Poker Go studio and next to Aria and we're playing the uh, 300k Super High Roller Ball. I started playing poker when I was very young, 16 years old, in high school with my friends. We just watched it on TV one day, and then we just started playing. Yeah, I was just happy playing, you know, 2,000 Euro tournaments, but basically what changed for me was that one year uh, there was a really good 25k at a PCA. Played against a bunch of people that I thought weren't that good, so I figured, why not just play all of them? I was on a really bad run up until one drop, which I ended up winning for 3.5 million and uh, you know it's a tournament so um, anyone can win. Basically when I won that tournament a lot of people came to me and said that it was about time that I won something. I was probably the biggest loser in 100Ks, 50Ks for uh, you know two, uh, two years. Certainly this year winning close to 6 million uh, has been uh, phenomenal. Lost my stack first hand. But thankfully they give you three stacks, so it's all okay. Hi Igor, what's up? No. <laughs> the high rollers are basically just a bunch of people that travel the world and uh, we meet at different stops and play against each other. Sometimes this guy shows up, you know, sometimes those guys show up, but in general the core group is always the same. Yeah, for people like me, it basically only makes sense to play the highest events. People pay you a lot of markup just to show up, so basically sometimes you just get paid. 10k just to show up at a tournament, and that's nice. Back over to the feature table. Nice spot for Nietzsche. Oh, oh yeah, he's king against a7. Ace9-8. And the turn. Any straightiness? Nope. Top two, so a7 will draw dead. Uh, special about super high rollers in general is just that once you get to this buy-in level, you truly do filter out the middle tier kind of regulars. The professionals that play there, they made it there because they're the best. And it's always a, a battle on the highest level. Five and a quarter bigs for Dominic, so uh, yeah, he's all in. Schindler puts the four bet in. Club draw for Nietzsche. Fair board. Queen or a 10 will do it too, so 14 outs twice. Nietzsche with all of those outs, of which he picked up an additional few right. on the turn in the form of a gutter. Somehow the nines hold, and Dominic will redeem one of his green biscuits. God, it's been going really badly. Uh, down on my third bullet already. I uh, don't think I could have done anything. Uh, it's gotta, gotta do better now. Uh, we still got 55 blinds, so plenty to work with. Yeah, just how tournaments go sometimes, you know. But thankfully here you get three tries, otherwise I'd be out already. If you're playing against a professional and you notice something they do wrong, you know, like a weakness in their game, most of the time this is just going to be gone the next time you play against them because everyone works on their game so hard. Every single one of them, when they make a mistake, you can see it on their face that they will be at home figuring out why did they make this mistake. I can guarantee you the next time they won't make the mistake. Always nice to mm -hmm. And the river. Mm -hmm. Pairs there the board. Ace-10. Ten. Sending 10-6 ten <laughs> into the muck. Sure and Dominic okay. Nietzsche's hopes I'm, I'm kind of for a cash here at Super High Roller Bowl 5. Once you realize uh, that poker is just a game with a lot of luck, it does take the pressure off, you know? It's not a personal game where you have like history with one another and like you guys really hate each other and this guy, you know, did this to you and this to you. That stuff doesn't happen because I find at the highest level, like, everyone has a lot of mutual respect for one another. Unless someone really messes up, you know, poker hands kind of play themselves. Uh, and if you study hard, you, you work hard on your game, you're gonna be so much more relaxed, you know? You're gonna be pulling that trigger on a bluff. You don't care, because you know it's a good play. That's the main thing I wanna stress here, is that poker is not personal. Basically what happens now is that you gotta work harder for a smaller progress. There's only so much you can fit into your head as a human being, you know? There's, there's a limit to how good we can get at this game. 
obviously I've matured as a person. I've, I've been playing for you know 12 years now and uh, I'm a different person. If I put in like 10 hours of study now, it's only gonna get me so much better. But for me, I'll tell you what, that's the really fun part. You know, that's, I'm loving the game. It's just fun for me to figure this out, you know?